What's up everybody? Eduardo Talbert here. Today we have a really 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 cool tutorial and this was by request. People have been asking me uh, to do this tutorial and uh, it was something that I wanted to do but there were so many options that I could not make my mind up until I said you know what let's just do it and commit. So today we're making this. That is a mummified fairy, or a sprite, or one of those woodland creatures uh, from mythology. Some people believe in them and some don't. But regardless, uh, we're going to make one and then we can tell everybody we found them in the forest while we were hunting for mushrooms or something like that. So let's get started. Okay, here we are. For this uh, tutorial, uh, we're going to need some little skeletons like this. Okay, I found these in a bag of 10. I also found this garland also has skeletons. They're slightly different, but they'll both work. If you don't know where to find this, I put the link below. We'll need a little bit of uh, baked clay, oven baked clay. So it's one of my best finds from a thrift store. I found this eight pound pack for 50 cents. And it's only missing one little brick. This thing costs like $75 on Amazon. It's crazy. But we don't need that much virtually for this project. We need a little piece about this big. So this one, which they sell at Walmart, or I put a link below, will be enough. And I think this is like between four and six dollars, something like that some wire too. Floral wire would work perfectly. It's nice and bendy and it's thin. Then you could have a standalone ferry like this one. Right? I made this ages ago. In which case you don't need anything else. Or in this case what I'm making today some sort of shadow box or display. All right. We're going to display the dead fairy in here. And for the corpsing we just need the heat gun, maybe some uh, stain and, uh, and some plastic, some clear plastic. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to stain the whole skeleton to give it a more uh, organic look and more like a mummified and rotten look. Just take the stain and wipe it all over your little guy. All right, once you have your little guy covered, take paper towels and just wipe him off. There you go. So that's with the stain and that's without. Get a little bit more like organic and aged look this way. Next step, let's fit some wings for this guy. So your skeleton might be different, but I was kind of looking at it and I can see that there is a hole here between the neck and the rib cage that we can use to anchor the wings. So I'm going to take about a, looks like a, maybe a foot, you know, 30, 40 centimeters of wire, of floral wire, because it's easier to use. And we'll just fold it in half. So, right. All right. Now, I'm going to measure how deep I want the wings to go, and uh, uh, the base of the wings to go, and I want to go to the base of the rib cage. So right here, where I'm holding, I'm going to bend it out. And you'll see why in one second. All right, so we have a little W. Let's see if you can see it. Can you see that? And that W. Squeeze it up. Squeeze this a little bit more, and this. I'm going to slide right here between. Let's see, if I'm trying to get the light so that you can see. I'm going to take these two things and slide them behind 
the neck and through the rib cage all the way in. I mean, you see where it went? It goes into the rib cage. Now to make it even better, we can take this end right here and bend it up so it goes around the spine like that. See a little bend? So now this should fit like perfect. See that? So now we have the base for two wings right there. So next step I'll take the hot glue gun and glue all the wires on the inside. Put a little bit here on the neck to secure that spot right there. So let that set for a second. Now I'm going to glue the wires to the inside. Now these are pretty solid. So we're going to give it the shape that you want. I want this to be almost like a, like a bat. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical since you found this fairy dead in, a, in the woods. So maybe it has a broken wing or maybe not. All right, next I'm going to take another little piece of wire. And this one will follow, follow the pattern of this one. Fold it in half too. Let's see if I can hook this to the neck. Ah, yes, perfect across here, put a drop of glue and now just match the curve of the main wing with this. We may have to use a little bit, little piece of tape to make it come around here and the same on this side. So I'm going to use some tape to tape these two together and what I'm trying to do as you can see is to have bones going down the wing. So let's put some tape here and here and just wrap it around. There you go, nothing to it. I'm going to do the same here. There you go, it's got some wings. So that part is good for now. What I don't like is his pose. He looks posed, right? Like fake. So we're going to make him look in a more natural pose. On this guy, so you can see, it looks more natural. It's a good angle there. See that? So we're going to do the same to this guy. And for that, uh, I'm going to bend the legs a little bit and the feet down. I'll do that with the heat gun. And the way I'm going to do that is heat up the plastic and then bend it, but try to bend it at the joint so you don't end up with curved bones which don't look too natural. There you go, the feet look more natural bent down. I'm going to do the same with the knees, just give it a tiny little bend. Hold it there until it cools. That one looks awesome. Do the same with this one. There you go. More natural looking legs, right? For the arms, we're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive and we're going to have to like cut them to reshape them. So hopefully we can just cut not all the way through but just a little enough to bend it. and put a drop of glue to set it in place where you want. Unfortunately, this one has to go against the chest, so we'll have to cut that one almost all the way through. Just like that. We put it right where we want it. So I'll be corpse, so don't worry about the glue. And I'm going to do the same with this arm and just position it where I want it. You position yours wherever uh, you think it should go. I'm just going to bend this one just a little bit in over the abdomen. 
right this little guy is posed just like I want it now I'm going to use the glue gun as a corpsing gun or a or like a 3d printer and all I'm doing is putting uh, glue along the wires just to make them thicker it'll give it a cool organic look to it see that For the horns, I'm just taking a tiny little piece like this and rolling it into like a snake. And here's where you have to decide how big or little you want the horns. I think I like that shape. But they're huge, so what I'm going to do is cut right here and right here. Uh, if you're going to make some eyes, just take the same snake and break it in half. Make a couple eyeballs. Like that. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and make two smaller ones just in case those are too big. So I'm going to go bake this according to the instructions. Okay, I'm going to paint these wings with white nail polish. And then we're going to stain it like we did the bones so it matches everything. So I used a nail polish remover and painted the wings white. Now those really stand out so I'm just going to do the same thing with the wood stain that we did to the whole skeleton and just stain and wipe off uh, the wing structure. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the horns that I baked and the eyeballs in. I'm going to test fit the big eyeball, too big, little eyeball, just right. So drop of glue and put it in there. Got the eyes in. Now let's put the horns on. Corpsing time. Well, I have this drop cloth, it's just plastic sheeting from the dollar store. I'm going to start wrapping the body. We'll worry about the wings later, but wrap the body all around. Just individual wraps for each arm, for the rib cage and the spine, and for each leg. I'm going to glue it there with a touch of hot glue on the top and bottom, and then just wrap it around the leg. This part is tedious, but this is where it looks really good. See that? So I'm going to wrap the whole body. There's no science to it. I'm just going to wrap this arm the same as we did this leg. I'm going to wrap this arm. This is going to be harder, this bent arm. Uh, but it has to be done correctly, otherwise you're going to have some webbing between and it doesn't look like an arm. And then the, this thoracic cavity, you know, the, the whole rib cage and the spine. And then the head, excluding the horns. And on the head, I'm going to probably leave a couple slits for the eyes. Oh, and if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. Here's my username. I'm taking a picture now of this behind the scenes shot for my feed. Right, I have the whole body wrapped up. Now I'm going to wrap the head. I'm going to cover the eyes, but I'm going to cut some slits and then I'm going to not wrap where the horns are. Face is totally covered. Now here's the fun part. We're going to shrink wrap this with the heat gun. And again, just be gentle with the heat because it'll melt the plastic in no time. It will also melt all the joints with the hot glue, so don't leave your heat gun under for too long. I think this deserves a close-up for you guys.
that's looking pretty cool already. I love this, uh, the abdomen here, how it shrank. See that? The legs are nice and shrank in the position we left them. And the front is almost done. I just gotta cut a little slit for the eyes. And then we gotta do the back. That face looks good to me. All right, let's work on the wings. The wings is quite easy. We're just going to lay this guy face down. We're pretty much going to lay a piece of plastic just across the wing. So let's start with a drop of glue right here in the middle. And let's put this there and we'll cut it if we need to. Then let's put a, another drop right here. Now I'm just going to cut the shape of a bat wing right here. Then give it a little turn here and then a turn up towards the back. See the wings? So now let's give it just a touch of heat to tighten them. Like to shrink them against the wing structure, the wing uh, bones. It's like magic. So final step. I mean final step for the ferry because we still got to put it in the shadow box. But uh, let's do what we always do and take uh, some uh, stain. Stain everywhere that is plastic. Uh, glue and strengthen any parts that are loose like these horns are kind of loose. So I might put another little bit of uh, glue with the glue gun. All right, staining time. This little dude is covered in stain, so let's start wiping it off. All right, I wiped the excess stain off, especially on the areas that I want to see through, like the toes and the different bones, the ribs right there, the ribs of the, the bones of the wings, and the back doesn't matter that much, but I still did some work on the back. There's the face with the eyes. And the horns. The last thing I had for this is this hair. This is from an old wig that my cat attacked. And I was able to salvage some of the hair. And I'm just going to take the hot glue gun and start gluing onto this dude's head. And then we'll cut it and style it. And I'm just going to start at the bottom somewhere around here with just a drop of glue. And a little bit more up here. And so on. And we have his head nice and covered. Now there's super long hair. You can leave it that way. I think that looks pretty cool. So let's put some on the sides coming straight down. There's the hair. Can you see that? Alright, so this is the little shadow box that I found. So let's see if this guy fits in there that way. Alright, so I'm going to put it about two thirds up. I have these vintage pins that I think they're my wife's. Just don't tell her. I'm going to pick a color that looks kind of like more vintage. So maybe like black pins. And I'm just going to put them on the wings like that. Another one right here. Let's put one to the foot. That guy's pretty mounted. The other thing I have is a vintage label. This. It's from the batch of labels that I used for my jar of eyeballs. If you haven't seen that tutorial, uh, check out my YouTube channel or I can link it below. And uh, I'm going to do a whole tutorial on how to make uh, old paper. But basically I just took a piece of paper. I designed some labels on Microsoft Word or Pages. Uh, 
printed it out on a laser printer or an inkjet that is not water soluble. And then I soaked this in uh, strong coffee. And I put a couple smudges of like fake blood. And I'm just going to write here, Woodland Ferry, quantity one, and maybe like a little signature. And that will go here on the specimen. Let's assume this is a really vintage specimen, so they didn't have glue. So let's just use pins for this. I'll put these pins away before my wife finds out. But anyway, we are done. Check it out. There's our little guy. There's the label. Handwritten with my god-awful handwriting. Uh, I use pins to hold it. So it's good and ready to hang on the wall, which I will. So there's the woodland fairy or the whatever creature it is. And here, uh, you knew it was coming, right? It's a thumbs up. So if you think that fairy is cool, give it a thumbs up. I need to hang that thumbs up. So until next time, I'm Eduardo Talbert. I will see you. It'll be a couple days. And I'm getting my computer back, so the editing should be better. Bye.